Reese's Pieces, an exploration into the puzzles, toys, games, and products of Reese Games Incorporated, as well as spin-off versions of those products. The company was also known as Reese Associates Incorporated, Paragon Reese Incorporated, with products also marketed by and for Romney Merchandise Corporation, Huey Palooey Incorporated, and Gamut of Games Incorporated. Maybe you've played one of these games or got stuck on one of their puzzles. Sit back and enjoy learning about each of these various products as we take you on an in-depth look at these items. Episode 002 Style number 387 Hot dog, it's the prank furter. <sighs> Another puzzle. I guess this means no food for me today. But don't worry, I've got this. Here we go. I'd like a hot dog and a hamburger. And can you make it quick? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Well, it's on its way. It'll be here soon. Now let's take a look at this puzzle. There's that friendly reminder again. Do not eat this puzzle. I wonder what else it has to say for itself. Well, on the back of the box, it says Prankfurter. There are good reasons why you should buy this Prankfurter puzzle. For instance, you can take it along on a picnic when you're not very hungry. You can give it to one of your gourmet friends as a clever new dish. Or you may relish the challenge of a weird new puzzle and decide to take the prank furter apart and put it back together again. Whatever your reason for buying prank furter, we're sure you'll be glad you did. Just holding this 22-piece puzzle in your hand will make you feel all American, and it's a lot of doggone fun too. There's a solution enclosed for those who try prank furter and realize they've bit off more than they can chew. Cooked up by Reese Games Incorporated, New York, New York, zip code 10,001. Orange, California, zip code 92,667. A subsidiary of National Paragon Corporation. Reese style number 387. Solution enclosed. This puzzle was copyrighted in 1977 by Reese Games Incorporated and was made in Hong Kong. Now let's get this thing open and see what it has to offer. Look here, another one of those empty ketchup packets. Cook's Grade A Fancy Ketchup. Sigma Packaging Corporation, Copeg, New York. Zip code 11,726. Pear, here. I wonder if it is also hollow in the center. Yep, it is the same as the one in the Burger Thing puzzle. Both are hollow and empty. Now here's the instructions with its eight simple stages in solving the puzzle. This prankfurter puzzle seems to have bigger gaps between its pieces. Even with these bigger gaps, it can still be tricky to get it apart. You might need some tools like these miniature flathead screwdrivers to try pry apart the pieces. But be careful, the puzzle is held together with long, thin pegs and tubes, and it is easy to break them if you pry apart the pieces unevenly. Notice how both sides of the bun are the same, just like in the other puzzle. They are both modeled off of the top pieces of a bun, golden brown on both sides of the hot dog. It might be just a puzzle, but it still looks good enough to eat, and I haven't eaten in about 20 hours. I hope that food gets here soon. The bun's attached to the hot dog by two large thick knobs, which are easy to remove. Then, if you want, the buns can also be exchanged for the bun on the opposite side. Besides these useful knobs in the puzzle, there are other longer and thinner pegs, which seem to break easily.
To separate the bun, you need to use your fingernails and try to pry it apart by loosening both sides at the same time. This is where those tools might come in handy. The bun layers are held together by pegs under each knob and one on either side of the central dividing line. You need to slide the pegs out of the tubes without bending them or they might break. Here you can see that one of the knob pieces came off easily, while the second does not want to come off at all. Each bun puzzle piece can be exchanged for the same piece on the opposite bun. If the knob pieces do not want to come loose, it is sometimes easier to try and separate the halves of the bun by pulling it apart at its edges. The central two pieces of the inner bun are angled inward so that they can slide through each other in one way, but will get stuck and prevent themselves from passing through each other if not at the correct angle. The knob pegs can then be easily removed by turning those parts like the hands of a clock round and round or back and forth. The hot dog is designed so that none of its parts are interchangeable. I'll call this end 8 with the number facing outward. This end will be number 5 after its parts numbers. We begin by splitting it down its edge seam. The outer edges are the easiest to take off first. As you can see here, they do not fit together if exchanged from one side to the other.
the central piece is locked together with two pegs. Once apart, you'll notice that the central piece with the long pegs is number 2. This will be placed on the same side as the number 8, which is facing outward. The side with the tubes for the pegs is numbered 5, just like the other pieces for that end of the hot dog. These hot dog pieces are the ones I had the most difficulty getting apart, and they have broken on me several times. Because of their thinness, even super glue doesn't seem to help in fixing them. I had to buy the puzzle twice, and luckily with the two copies of the puzzle, I was able to replace these broken pieces from one puzzle with parts from the other puzzle. Here is a look at each of the hot dog's numbers and where you can find these numbers. This piece has two number fives on it, one in the bowl's edge and the other down near the tube. First, we'll pair up the pieces. Then we begin the reconstruction phase by joining the number five edge pieces together first. There are two jigsaw type pieces on either side of the central pieces. These outer pieces have two different size holes, which allow only the correct piece to be inserted. They are held to the central two pieces by smaller mini pegs, which prevent them from sliding out of the central pieces until the center has been pried apart. We start with the number 5 single tube end piece. We then place the jigsaw piece into that, and then add the single peg piece for that side. The next piece we add is number 2, the double peg center. followed by the number 8 jigsaw puzzle piece. However, this also has the number 5 on it, but on the outside, instead of the inside. Its inside has the number 8, but it has to be put on upside down compared to the other similar piece. We then add the other number 8 pieces to make this end of the hot dog. Here you'll notice that the little mini peg will be held by the edge of the first place number 5 central piece.
Now we'll look at the numbers on the bun layer of the puzzle. The outer bun section consists of parts 3, 4, and 6, while the inner part of the bun are parts 1, 2, 5, and 7. First we combine parts 1 and 2 in a yin yang type pattern. We then try to attach the bun ends to this main section. Notice how these pieces do not fit on the opposite ends, even though they are almost mere images of each other. Number 7 goes on to number 2, while number 5 goes on to number 1. Next parts 4, 3, and 6 need to be attached. The central piece with the two pegs has two large bulges on one side and one small bulge and one large on the opposite side. The side with the two big bulges is where you attach piece 4 and the opposite side is for piece 6. At first they look like they can fit the other way around, but as you see here, the pieces can only fit into the completed puzzle in one way. If you draw a line across the puzzle from left to right, you'd notice that all the peg holes are on the side nearest or farthest away from you. You will now need to match the upper and lower halves of the bun with their pegs and holes. It is usually easier to do this by attaching the central outer pieces first, then the pieces near the edge second. You do not have to disassemble these pieces, but here you can see it a bit better. I like to think of the inner edges of the bun as looking like Vulcan or elf ears. Live long and prosper, as a Vulcan would say. They also make silly looking eyes.
Notice how the upper bun fits over the notch in the lower layer. Here is a view of the two central pegs as they are fitting into their tubes on the bun. As you try to attach the hot dog to the buns, you'll notice that the bun knobs are angled in a U-shape so that the hot dog can hang from them. They are also angled so that as the hot dog hangs, it causes the buns to tip inward, making a tighter fit. The hot dog is suspended in the air by the two halves of the bun. This causes the hot dog to be more stable when it is sitting on a table, and more wobbly when you are holding it, similar to the later Burger Fang puzzle. The prank burger is a good puzzle and has 22 pieces. That's seven more pieces than the burger fang. However, the pieces in Prankfurter have lots of little pegs holding the majority of the puzzle together, making it quite brittle. Reese Games seem to have learned from this when making their burger fang puzzle. The gaps in the Prankfurter seem to be much bigger, while in the burger fang, they seem to have learned how to fill that space with inner framed walls to strengthen the puzzle without the need for brittle pegs. Although not related to these puzzles, I also wanted to mention another Reese Games puzzle called Licorice Sticks, which also had a food theme. That puzzle was released several years earlier and was part of their series of geometry themed puzzles. Those puzzles have an interesting history of their own. Now let's try to get this thing back into its box. Now if we compare the two puzzles, we find the Burger Fang has a slightly more detailed package. But the puzzle itself is much simpler and has fewer pieces. They were both made in 1977, but the Prankfurter has style slash model number 387, while the Burger Fang puzzle has number 388. I've got to go and get the food. I'll be right back. My camera gets lonely when I'm away, like a little lost puppy, waiting for its owner to return. It'll just have to hunker down and wait for me to return. Well, I'm back. Food at last.
Here we go. Hi, burger. And a hot dog. Okay, now let's compare these puzzles to the real thing. Here we got the tasty hamburger, and here's the hot dog. Let's take it out of the box so we can look at it a bit closer. First we'll compare the burger thing to the real thing. The puzzle is a bit darker and the bun is thicker but smaller. The onions I got on my burger were onion chunks instead of onion rings, but now that I think about it, I also forgot to get a ketchup packet. The meat patty is about the same size. Now on to the prank burger. The bun on the real thing seems to be longer and thinner, while the puzzle is thicker and short. Now for a quick bite. First we see if the puzzle's any good. Well, that didn't go too well. Now for the real hot dog. But first, some ketchup. Mmm, that's good. Yum. More, more, mmm. Then I find one of the puzzle pieces got in there by mistake. Ugh, not very appetizing.
Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching these reviews of Prankfurter and Burgerthang. That's it. Until next time. See ya. To be continued.